Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Over the weekend, Minister of Agriculture Zulfikar Mustafa visited Central Quarantine Burbis to address concerns of farmers. The minister told them that government will support them to reduce the cost of production. We are interested that the farmers must ensure that they get the support from the government to bring down the cost of production. And when you bring the, when when you can able to bring down the cost of production, you will have more monies in your pocket in your pockets, and those money will become disposable earnings for you, not only for you, because when you use those money in the community, you could do the community benefit. Scores of residents of Georgetown on Saturday capitalized on government's offer of core home support and home improvement subsidies. This has been executed through the Adequate Housing and Urban Accessibility Program funded by the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Susan Rodriguez, says the initiative ensures the ministry 2,000 home improvement subsidies and 250 core homes are adequately dispersed. We are seeing mostly applications for the home improvement subsidy, and so we're happy to... to help those um, people who need the houses renovated and to bring it up to a standard where they can live comfortably. But we're also accepting the four homes applications here at this location today as well. On the COVID front, Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony says 20 samples taken from patients have been sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency to test for the Omicron variant. One of the things that we do is to take samples from patients and we send them to confirm which variants are circulating in Guyana. And over the weekend, we would have sent uh, 20 samples to CARFA for confirmation. Vice President Dr. Barajak Deo on Tuesday reiterated the government's plans for Guyana to be an oil producer in a net zero carbon world. The vice president was at the time speaking at the launch of the four-day International Energy Conference and the Expo held at the Marriott Hotel Georgetown. Let me be very, very clear about our position. We support net zero by 2050. In fact, at this point in time, because our forest is such a huge carbon sink, we're already at net zero. In fact, we're positive. Net Zero 2050 report, launched by the International Energy Agency, outlines a scenario in which the world could achieve the global climate target in a manner that prevents the world from overheating. Dr. Jack Dio explained that Guyana's net carbon effect is so significant that it equates to the combined emissions of Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. And even with us producing a million barrels of oil per day, they with all the emissions using current technology, we will still be net zero because of the nature of our forests and the carbon sink, which the president spoke about, 19 gigatons storage and an annual emission. Also at the energy conference, minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Diodat Indar, says Guyana's local content law gives Guyanese an advantage in the oil and gas sector. The legislation that, that, that is now in place will give Guyanese literally a fighting chance. That is what it does. Give us a fighting chance and it enables the tier one contractor, the licensee and the contractor to enjoy local being part of their operation. At cheaper cost. The local content policy as a means of ensuring first preference is given to Guyanese and Guyanese businesses in the oil and gas industry. Importantly too, it ensures the transfer of knowledge and skills. Guyana will be pursuing a low carbon transportation infrastructure to reduce the demand for imported fossil fuels for vehicular transport in 2022, says Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips. Delivering remarks on day three of the International Energy Conference, PM Phillips said Guyana remains committed to a low-carbon economy, while at the same time advancing its transition from conventional energy sources. To accomplish this, we intend to foster the development of an electric vehicle industry to substitute fossil fuels with electricity while enhancing the ability of the electric grid 
to integrate high levels of intermittent renewable energy. To this end, the installation of fast charging stations for electric vehicles will be piloted during 2022 in regions three, four, and six. This would be supplemented with future initiatives to increase efficiency levels of vehicle consumption of fuel. The Prime Minister also highlighted that the new oil producing nation is intent on creating an energy mix using low carbon energy resources such as solar, hydropower, wind, biomass and natural gas. He says the gas to energy project will play a major role in government's effort. Local company Geico Construction and General Services Incorporated entered into a joint venture agreement with a foreign consultancy, Rev1 Energy, during the International Energy Conference and Expo at the Marriott Hotel Kingston on Thursday. Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Deodat Indar, said the partnership is based on a model government has pushed over the years and which the local content legislation has now built into law where experienced foreign firms bring capacity development to locals. You know, for many years, many, many years, we have been talking about how do a Guyanese company move from the level they are operating to up the game? Because what we have is a technology gap as well as a skill gap in particular sections of the new economy that we are, which involve, involves oil and gas and other massive projects. So here it is that Geico Construction is now partnering via JV with Rev1 Energy. And what does that mean? It simply means there's a partnership where new skills, new technology is now going to be in country, part of a local company that will bid for these massive projects. To promote development in agriculture, Subject Minister Zulfikar Mustafa on Thursday handed over 400 boiler chicks and starter feed to the President's College Agriculture Science Department. Minister Mustafa says government has been working aggressively to develop the agri-sector. I'm happy to make this simple donation to the President's College. I know for a fact that also we will be preparing or we are in the process of preparing an entire agriculture department for this um, college. And I hope that we can replicate this across the country because it's important that we start the process in the school system so that we can prepare our students to go into this important field. Minister Mustafa also said that he hopes the resources would aid in the students seeing greater CSEC results. Guyanese welders and other technical professionals are set to undergo high-level courses, which will allow their expertise to match international standards. A Memorandum of Understanding Providing International Training in These Fields was signed on Friday at the Marriott Hotel Georgetown on the sidelines of the International Energy Conference and Expo. The agreement was inked between the Ministry of Labor's Board of Industrial Training, BIT, GEICO, and Meyer Group of Companies. The technical people will continue this conversation. Uh, at a level of policy, I know what the government is seeking to do. And therefore, every opportunity that we have, that we can expose our people to the highest type of training to participate in industry, I, as Minister of Labor and the Board of Industrial Training, we will take that, those opportunities to ensure that we can um, together uh, develop this country of ours. United States Ambassador to Guyana, Sarah Ann Lynch, also witnessed the ceremony. As Mashramani nears, Persons attending events are being cautioned against complacency and are being reminded that the country is still dealing with the pandemic. While we have lifted the curfew, all the other measures are still in place. And I do hope that any person who is promoting activities or involved in these types of entertainment arrangements that it would first seek guidance from the task force before proceeding to organize any such um, gathering. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. 
Goodbye.